In this video, we're gonna take a look at a purple ink by Ackerman, their number 15. Now, as always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, it really does help the channel out for you to check out the entire video. Also down in the description is a link to the purple ink playlist, so if you wanted to see more, you can find that there. I'm an ink guy, let's get into the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Claire Fontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. We have no feather, no spread. We do get some light peppering of shading, as in there's some dark spots that occur in the stub. They definitely show themselves in the extra fine and in the medium. Now the extra fine and the medium are the same tone, just a little bit lighter than the stub. The extra fine took six seconds to dry while the medium took 11. Scrubby for both do show some color variation, as does the writing. And the smear test says you could probably recover if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Conklin word gauge with a fine nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. No bleeding, some light ghosting going on, no feather, no spread, a couple of darker spots do show themselves in the medium. Only one darker spot shows itself in the extra fine. The medium shows none. Now the extra fine is the lightest tone on the page. The medium is just a tad darker, but the stub's darker than the medium. The extra fine took 11 seconds to dry while the medium took 21. The scrubby for both aren't showing any color variation, though we only got a couple of darker spots in the writing. And the smear test you could probably not recover if you smeared while you were writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down and then it's put into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And what we see is there is the hint of some of this bonding at the very bottom. It's pushing up very light, but it is bonding as it's moving and gathering towards the top. Now I don't see any evidence of other dyes mixed in that it looks simply as a purple dye. The one on the right that's allowed to dry for 10 minutes before it's put into water. We do see it bonding with the paper quite a bit at the bottom, suggesting it might be a little bit resistant here. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. No bleeding, no ghosting. We have no feather, no spread, no shading for the stub. A couple of darker spots really showing themselves nicely in the extra fine. Same thing with the mediums, really showing some darker spots very well. Now the extra fine and the medium look to be about the same tone, a little bit lighter than the stub. The extra fine takes six seconds to dry while the medium takes 13. The scrubby for both do show some color variation and we're definitely seeing that peppering of shading throughout the writing. And the smear test you could likely recover if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink could be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. This smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, uh, the blowout in the lowercase h makes me say I would not use it in a note-taking situation if I needed to go back and highlight. Water's lifting most of this ink, but the ink we saw stay in the chromatography appears to be staying on the paper. Now it did not stay in the pen as it only took water to get this out of my pen. The pen flush is doing a bit more than water. We see quite a bit of white of the paper coming through and the one third bleach solution that you're not gonna need absolutely destroys it. The next writing sample is done on Twisby notebook paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. We have no feather, no spread, no shading for the stub, no shading for the medium. Now they come in at the same tone, very dark. The extra fine that's a lot lighter than the stub or the medium does have a few spots of shading that show up, just in a little bit of darker, darker bits, like the K in quick, the B in brown. The word the is a little bit darker than the word over, so it's definitely there. The extra fine took seven seconds to dry while the medium took 12. The scrubby for both do show color variation, but 
For as much as I can see with the medium, it's not really showing in the writing, and a smear test you could likely recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Ackerman's number 15 has a viscosity of 1.26, making this a wet ink. The next writing sample is done on moleskin paper. Now we know that this paper is not particularly well behaving for fountain pens, so all of these spots that are heavy into the page, the fact that they're not touching the next page is all good news. None of this corrupted the page underneath. It only stops you from using the back of the page. Now the medium has quite a bit of feathers, but all of the feathers, there's tons of them, they're just tiny. The extra fine even has feathering that's going on, but they're even smaller than the medium. Either of these I don't see as being the deal breaker for someone if they needed to use this notebook. There's no spread in the writing. The extra fine's quite a bit lighter than the medium. The extra fine has no shading, neither does the medium. The scrubby, or sorry, two seconds to dry. The scrubby shows no color variation. The writing didn't have it. And the smear test, you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Ackerman's number 15 has an average dry time of 11 seconds, making this a fast drying ink. The last writing sample is done on crowd favorite 20 pound copy paper. We have no bleed through that touches the next page, but it is incredibly heavy into the paper. It does mean you can't use the back of the page. It's just not destroying the next page. Now, both of them have feathering. It's really tiny, really manageable. It's the spread that's a whole lot more. The spread on that medium takes it to between a broad and double broad. The spread of the extra fine takes it to a bit more than uh, a fine, but this doesn't look too, too bad for this paper. There's no shading in either of these. The extra fine is a little bit lighter than the, the medium. The extra fine only took a second to dry. The scrubby doesn't show any color variation, neither did the writing. And the smear test, you don't have to worry about smearing it because you can't smear it. Instead of finding inks that look like Ackerman's number 15, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went with a brown ink by Diamine, Ancient Copper. Now, if you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description are links to those playlists. So what do I think of Ackerman's number 15? This is another really dark purple. Here in this pen on this paper, it looks almost black, much darker than the swatch. It can write in a lighter tone with shading and it does it very well. I don't have any issues with this, and I have covered so many dark purples that I'm appreciating them even more. So what nib and pen are going to give the best writing experience with this ink? Now, I'm not really on for that super dark purple. I would like it to be a little bit lighter, but to get that lighter, I would go with a dry fine or dry medium that's going to give me the lighter tone and some of those nice pepperings of shading throughout. I hope you got something out of this video, and in the next video, we're going to take a look at Robert Oster's Peach.